Hey, welcome. You've landed at the process. My name is Dr. John Bush. We are trying to help you win your fantasy football drafts. This material came from my textbook uh, on Kindle. Uh, not sure where we're going with that on uh, this year, but it was there in the past. This is all new updated for uh, this season. 2021, and we are in Lesson 14, Age Analysis Part 2, so you probably need to go see Part 1 if you haven't seen it already, and assuming you have, let's, let's take off here, see what kind of fun metrics and data we have. Okay. So previously in part one, I looked at uh, the positions uh, across all spectrums. In other words, uh, the worst to the best. Now I thought it was important for those who were uh, wanting to win, we should look at the top, let's just say top 25% at the end of the season and focus on those, I think you're going to uh, potentially get a better view of uh, the metrics by focusing on the top players. And so what we have here is from year 2000 at the top, 2002 to 2020, and the columns are quarterback, running back, tight end, wide receiver, and we see the average fantasy points per game metric. So I took all 25% of the quarterbacks by each year and determined that, uh, the average there. And then the grand average across the year is, let me find my little thing here. Wanting to draw here. There it is. Hey. Uh, so, for instance, year 2002, the average for all the top 25 positions uh, QB, RB, tight end, and, and wide receiver was 14.2, but that's really skewed to the quarterback, as you might predict. And we can start, and I used a colorization. Uh, red to green, green is top, or blue to green, um, blue to red, blue is top. I like to give a little bit of color variation there in the metrics. So let's kind of just do a scan. It's it's uh, what I like to do when I see a lot of numbers and. Uh, I like to do a, what I call a soft scan, just kind of look at the, the numbers, what's popping out to me, what are the trends, you know, the kind of the, that blink, in quotes, and that's a good book, by the way, blink. Uh, what's, what's the numbers telling us? Well, I think for a quarterback, it's telling me that uh, we are living in the era of quarterbacks now compared to previous years. In fact, last year was the top 23 fantasy points per game by the top uh, quarterbacks. Wow, that's, that's crazy crackers there. Uh, the only other thing that kind of hits me is we've seen a resurgence of the uh, running backs uh, about starting 2018. You can see 14-2 next year, 13-9. This year dropped a little bit. Uh, that's, I'm guessing there was a lot of COVID issues. So I'm suspecting that's going to bounce back closer to 14. Uh, tight ends uh, have have improved 17 and 18, but we are not in the golden age of tight ends, which apparently was from 09 to 15, uh, which is interesting. So I don't I don't know if it's just the drafts, the players, the you know 
there, there's probably some hidden information there, but you know, all we can do is look at the, the metrics and, and consider. So I suspect and would not expect uh, more than we got last year, I guess is what I would say for that. Again, this is just an overall wide receivers. Uh, we're kind of in some down times here. I mean, it's not too bad, but look at 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, and 10. 11 was kind of a down year, but but we're we're talking, we're dropped, what, half a point to a full point in the last four or five years. Uh, uh, and it's not the fact that we have more wide receivers. It is because we're only looking at the top quarter. So uh, unless there's more wide receivers in the top percent, which could be, I guess I could get the actual numbers, but I um, don't know how much. Even for me, there's a, a bottom to what I'm doing here. I, I mean, you know, we all, as data people, try to fill our time in with hunting numbers down. I think I'm happy with, with the level I'm at. But I think just on average, and if you remember when I say the word average, I want you to go back and look at reference class forecasting. And that's what all my metrics really, that's, that's such an important lesson. You guys, guys, girls, you folks got to pick it up and consider what are our expectations, okay? You just need to be aware of that per game. What are we expecting? What is a good quarterback? Uh, love to see 23. Okay. So if you look just kind of at the, the numbers, if we had a fantasy team with a quarterback, a rod receiver, a running back, and a tight end, the tight end would be producing the least amount. Okay. Whereas the running back and wide receiver would be producing about 13, and the quarterback is the star at 23. So I think there has been some leagues won grabbing the early high-producing quarterbacks, especially if your league mates are cutting up uh, the wide receivers and running backs, and there's not you know somebody that really comes out with a strong crew of that. Uh, with that said, obviously we know that uh, the top every year uh, are definitely skewed, and so it's not a normal distribution at all, and, and we'll, we will encounter that as we uh, continue our metric journey here. Okay, uh, probably more than I wanted to say. But anyway, uh, as far as overall numbers, with the exception of 17, even in a COVID year, you know, it wasn't so bad, but I think the quarterback certainly helped the number there. So I think, uh, you know, we could see, uh, you know, a better number. You know, I think people love where there's lots of points. I think we should expect to get nice points out of our top players. Here's just a graph of, and you can see the quarterback, and notice the trend over from this data point here is 2002 all the way to 2020. Check that out. That is really nice. Quarterbacks are really bringing home, and I think that's that's going to make them more valuable. The, the concept of the late quarterback is that we have a lot more uh, quarterbacks that are producing a lot of points more than usual. And people who are uh, streamers, you know, 
think that they can find some of the multi, the bottom tier quarterbacks to have a good game and you know balance out having the uh, stud quarterbacks. I mean that's the idea. I I haven't really followed up on those metrics, so I think to me that can potentially be as reasonable as anything. Uh, wide receivers, we've seen a little bit. Look at the blue dash line. We've seen a little bit come up in the last few years. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, that was running backs in blue. And then wide receivers in red. We've, You know, it's kind of been fairly steady, but, uh, you know, it's been a little bit lower than, you know, in the previous years. And then tight ends, again, I think this was the golden age right here. I don't know if we just don't have the players like we used to. Maybe there's a grander cycle, you know, of players. You know, I, I know there's some randomness to it. But we're certainly, I think, better, you know, if this was kind of that era back here. So I think we're we're you know we're we're doing okay in in, in tight ends, but uh, looking at the gaps there, but clearly the tight end is going to be producing on average less. And I think if you're streaming tight ends, since you're producing less points on average, that might be a, a viable way to do it. That. That seems to me that you play for a chaotic situation, you know, and it's probably coming down, and I know this is not novel or new, uh, to touchdown dependency, whether they're a good dog or a bad dog, uh, depending on, you know, last year. So everybody judges based on that. And remember that, you know, touchdowns are, are fleeting, kind of like the – Golden Snitch and Harry Potter, if you're a Harry Potter fan, probably. I don't know if you guys are nerdy like me. Okay, so I think I've hammered that to death. So I wanted then to bring back our metric age, age sectors looking at fantasy points per game, but looking at the top, in this case, QBs, Top quarter QBs, let's take a look at age. Remember, we've seen a trend up, and we've seen a suggestion that the younger quarterbacks and older quarterbacks, kind of a barbell situation. Let's see what the top quarterbacks metrics are going to tell us. So from 02 to 2020, we have quarterbacks in 20 to 23, 24 to 26, 27 to 30, and 31 plus. And these numbers are fantasy points per game. In the top 25% uh, of end of season uh, quarterbacks, and I think pretty clear that the younger quarterbacks are having their day since 18. We had 26 fantasy points per per game uh, by the with the young 21 to 23 year olds. Really wild. What's interesting to me was that in the old days, say 2010, the 20, uh, you know, the 21 to 26, those two, pretty much, not much happening there. These were the weaker guys, the ones that would show up were probably going to be at the bottom of the top 25%. And quarterbacks were not producing as much. And like I said, about 2011, the, the, the switch hit and there was some young young guys coming around. And by the way, the, the dash circles are the top uh, uh, fantasy points per game by slot. So in other words, in the year 2002, the top slot is 24 to 26. 
So if you look across, you can see the dominance of the top slots. And you can see that 27 to 30 dominated pretty much to 2010. And then at 2011, we started seeing uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 were 21 to 26. And 1, 2, 3, the three outliers were in the older quarterback slots there, which these were increasing as well. Versus, look at, it's kind of like this trough here. It's like, these young guys are starting to burn out a little bit and only, you know, we're winnowing out the older dogs that can really produce. And you're probably losing some players by 30. And so the actual physical numbers are going down, but who's left are probably the better quarterbacks. I think you know who we're talking about. So I think the take home is pretty much common knowledge that the young and youth are taking over uh, quarterbacks now. Uh, you know, people say that, but I think this is uh, some metrics to, to, to uh, support that. Uh, it's like, what the hell is this wall tile? No. So this is an area graph. This is meant strictly for a consideration of the landscape. Okay, I believe, based on my work as a scientist, that you've got to look top down as well as bottom up on your metrics. So if you look at the scale of fantasy points, anything in blue is 20 and above, anything in red is 10 and below, and pink is in the middle. So we can clearly see, okay, check this out, for the most part, about 2010, the switch hit. And we are now in the new era. Some issues right here with the younger guys. This is the young, next young, more seasoned, and the older dogs up in here. And for the most part, uh, as we just showed in the table, this is confirming the overall landscape trends. So I don't think, uh, you know, I would walk away from that. The only issues I think for me is I think I will just make note of who the 27 to 30, especially having some concern about some of these guys uh, playing down and kind of eventually leaving the league. So I think the barbell approach of the hot quarterbacks probably are going early and you might find a steady older dog for later play. I think that seems at least a beginning of thinking about the 2021 drafts. Okay, uh, running backs, let's take a look at all that. Same kind of metrics, top end of the season, running backs versus age sectors versus fantasy points per game. Same kind of table, 2002 to 20. The top slot is shown with red, and the age is from hot young running backs all the way to the old dogs that are surviving. So I think. 2002 to 6, uh, three of them were 26 and below. The other two were a little older. 27, I'm sorry, 2007, we basically went on a run to about 2013, and we see actually the old 
running backs. So I wonder if that was an end. Some of these folks here were moving towards, you know, this group, and then they're gone. And then another wave took their place, and these are the hot dogs. And notice last year we saw a, a, a drop, but notice kind of a a trend towards a little bit older because maybe these guys got a little older. So we might see some of the quarterbacks, some of the ones that are surviving past 26, may surprise us. So there may, may be a little area here that is kind of under the radar. So look for some hot dogs that have kept it up pretty well and, and might be moving because I see this trend. See, this is looking at that kind of coming down, and then then eventually they're gone. So I'm wondering, are we starting, and will we see in 2021 some of that happening? But notice, even when we had a trend, the young dogs were still doing well. So just think about that. You know. I mean, it comes down to the player at some point. You can't use aggregate stats, you know, you just kind of put you in a direction for questions. I think that's interesting. Here's the area, and we're looking for the yellow. And we now, after so many years, see some yellow, whereas... Back in the old days, we had some of that, and then we had a deficit. And notice we've even had a kind of bottom fall out here last year or two. So uh, I thought that was kind of interesting to see some of that, see what that's telling us. So I think uh, we you know, look for some hot dogs coming up in the draft. These rookies that find the spot, they can take off. But I think everybody knows that, so I'm not sure how valuable that is, uh, you know, knowledge-wise. But here, here's the data anyway. Tight ends, same concepts, same figures. What are we seeing here? I guess probably green wasn't my best color here. But I think about 2007, we had a run of old dogs, if you see it here. Nice. Two, three, four, five, six, seven here. And we had a couple younger tight ends. I don't know. I probably should find out who those were. I'm sure you stats, you player folks know that. But uh, after that, we are you know, kind of in a, a deficit for young tight ends. We had some perking back up last year, so it's not all doom and gloom. But I do see that, uh, uh, you know, the older dogs here did pretty good last year, and some of the ones in 27 to 30, uh, they this group may have been moving to there. So I'm I'm thinking the little bit seasoned tight ends are the way to go. And I, I think most people are probably on that bandwagon as well. Looking at the orange, not a lot of orange in here. One right here. So then we're to the purples. And there's a purple right in there, purple there, purple there. So the older dogs have had some nice runs here. Uh, we did have some young plays here, but it's been five or six years. And we've had a lot of uh, weak, flabby plays right in here. So... Uh, I, I'm thinking I'm sticking towards the more seasoned tight ends, and I think the area Graham is, is kind of telling us that, imparting that information 
to us. Wide receivers, what are we seeing? Remind me not to do green circles here. Uh, so, looked to me like about 2009 here. We had a nice run of the 27 to 30 year olds right here and notice some old dogs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven right in here tend to be 27 or uh, up. So kind of almost tied in like. Uh, the next years we've kind of had a little bit of uh, all over the place. I'm not sure there's a trend, but 16-7, 16, 16, that's nice. 15s are pretty good. It's really nice. So what have we seen recently? Uh, I think we've seen that the last three years, uh, we're still waiting for those young wide receivers to show up. So people may be overestimating the younger wide receivers. Take a look at that, these last five slots here. And notice that the old dogs, you know, weren't so great. I mean, that's okay. But the trend right here in the last, what, with the exception, has been in the 27 to 30, kind of a sweet spot. So I think I'm going to give extra credit to wide receivers in that spot and give a little bit of doubt to some of the hot shots that are being drafted in our rookie drafts. Okay, on average. Okay, so I need to do some more research. You know, you don't just totally ignore things, but, you know, there's some trends, and trying to read the data tea leaves is kind of what data analysis folks try to do, so I try to do that. If we look at the area here, orange is the key, so we really hadn't had a nice bit of orange for a while, actually. It's been pretty sparse. You know, in the recent, what, six, seven, was it, five years? It's been pretty thin. Uh, we've had some, you know, some stronger 15s here, and but uh, not sure. Had a nice, you know, some of these areas in here, the 27 to 30s. Eh. Uh, but clearly nothing you could Hang your hat on. My bad. <sighs> Got to get some air here. Got to perk myself up. Okay, I'm back. So we're now, so I think the, the take home, younger quarterbacks, Younger running backs, four season tight ends, 27 to 30 wide receiver ish. Okay, just kind of some general trends. Start looking at your mock graphs and whatnot. And start plugging that that in. Let's step back out to all positions again and look only at the young dogs. Uh, I went to each positional category this time and marked the top five. And it's pretty clear some of the patterns we're seeing. Uh, 18, 19, and 20. Look at that average of fantasy points, not per game, but total fantasy and I think the young quarterbacks continue their journey 2020 was the top 
Running backs, we kind of had a disappointing year. I, I want to think it's COVID. And we should get back maybe to 2016. I'm sorry, 216, something like that, coming back. So we might have an opportunity to grab some of the younger running backs because they had a hit or miss season last year. COVID may have clouded or injuries clouded the issues a little bit. Tight ends, we actually had a strong year for young tight ends, surprisingly. Uh, so I think uh, some of the ones that were coming on were probably a surprise to most. Wide receivers, kind of coming back close to 200, but not in the top five over the last 18 years, but certainly bounced back from 2018, which was a poor year for uh, wide receivers and tight ends, actually. Running backs were having a uh, quarterbacks were running that year. And you can look at this data, you know, by the age. So I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty straightforward what's happening here. Have you look at that. We'll come back to the ratio numbers, which is kind of interesting. Another way to track the data. There's eight sectors. I think our quarterbacks are pretty clear. These young quarterbacks. Tight ends did have a year, but there was a, a you know, a, a, a trough before. So is that real? Can we expect that? I don't. I would say maybe not. I think the odds are against it that the young, hot rookie tight ends that, you know, especially year one, uh, I'd be cautious. I think there's enough other players to go for. Running backs, we've had a nice run these last few years. Not too bad. I mean, it could be worse, but it's definitely better than it was previously. To look at this trough. And then wide receivers, we're starting to see a comeback. We've been in a trough. And, uh, you know, we've seen better, I guess is another way to say it. We've seen better. So, I mean, it's not, I'm not running out to grab every young wide receiver now, unless I'm in, you know, obviously dynasty talking. The time frame is different versus redraft. The next age group, what do we got? Quarterbacks are still doing nicely. Uh, running backs, we did have 2019, wasn't too bad. 2020, not too bad. Uh, but you can see the heyday of these guys was way back. Here's our golden age of tight ends. <laughs> we are not in that age anymore. And wide receivers, uh, eh, kind of flabby data there. I'm not overly involved. Kind of a mixture there. I think more of what is here is continuing the story of younger quarterbacks there. Nothing's really jumping out at me in this age sector here. Take a look at it, but some movement of the tight ends, but you know, nothing that I'm just like, I mean, wide receivers are doing fairly well if you look at the trough, right? Kind of going up. Some of these younger dogs may be moving into this next age group, and we might see a trend moving towards that. So they may be closer to getting to another peak. So you might get something there. Definitely take a look at that moving into the 24 to 26 range. 
27 to 30. Some of our quarterbacks uh, last couple of years have been underwhelming, whereas the previous four years were nice. Running backs are really falling down the past two or three years. Really sad. Tight ends, uh, we did have a top year in 18, but had one of the worst years in a long time as well. Wide receivers. Kind of some nice numbers here, drop, and then we came back. So I'm not sure what the metrics are saying there. I'm going to be a little bit pickier with 27 to 30 year olds. Just looking at this hit or miss data. Quarterbacks look pretty steady. Wide receivers have come up. Running backs, uh, it looks to me like they're going down. That's the trend I note. And tight ends were going up, but dropped. So, not sure if I'm buying anything here. Hey, my protector. Okay, let's move on. By the way, sometimes metrics are not just uh, uh, you know, all celebrations and New Year's Eve kind. Some of it is a slog. And what is it? You can't appreciate laughing till you know about crying. So there you go. Uh, we have to cry and work our butt off through the data to finally find those nuggets. So it's not like everything is just going to slap us in the head and say here we are so the older group what are we seeing here uh the older quarterbacks are not just completely you know r.i.p yet uh we've certainly seen from 2011 on we've had some really nice years of the old dog uh quarterbacks coming in at age 31 plus the running backs, there's this, people say, oh, old running backs. That's true for the last two years, but look at the five years. We had three, uh, or is that two? That's six. Okay, three of the six years, 13 to 18, uh, had nice, strong years. So I wouldn't just automatically throw running backs that are old under the bus but you know I wouldn't rush out to you know use a lot of draft capital either I, th I think I think I would be looking for uh, a narrow slice of maybe the running backs that are just coming into this age group maybe not on the back end of the age like whatever and look for those who have you know opportunities and you know kind of have a pedigree a little bit but you know i think if i'm tied with a younger quarter uh running back I, I think i'm going to go with the youth just all numbers you know looking at tight ends again last year we saw the 27 to 30, having a good year. 31 and up, having some years. So uh, we had a trough in 18 and 19, but really popped back. Uh, wide receivers uh, not having the best four years here at all, being old wide receivers. So I, I'm, I'm breaking towards the youth. Not extreme youth, but more of a seasoned approach with my uh, wide receivers there. So I urge you to consider this. And again, relook at this, come back. I mean, this is, you know, a little bit preseason. You know, you can listen to these lessons again if you want. Hey! Okay. 
Okay, so let's move on. I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, other than maybe tight ends, I'm being very cautious about 31 year old. Here's just the data, and I do like this kind of trend with the quarterbacks here, but I see. Uh, running backs dropping, wide receivers dropping. Uh, like I said, tight end, that was a really interesting year, a, a trough and then a spike up. So uh, I think I would review the tight ends that were older and see uh, which ones can bring it home again. Uh, so I might do some research in this category, and I think I'm not anywhere, any ways concerned about older uh, quarterbacks, just in general, right? There's more to it than just, a, you know, a quick decision like that. Oh. So running back versus wide receivers, a ratio. To me, I like to consider the value of running backs relative to wide receivers in trends. I think if you set a ratio up, it gives you an idea of anything's changing. In other words, you're deep in the draft and you have a choice between a viable running back or wide receiver, assuming you've got say your top three in each so this is your fourth one you know in a ppr what do you take just blind average flip a coin i know you can break the ties i can break the ties but just it's just good again reference class forecasting i can't stress that enough okay you need to become one with that but we need to understand on on the average what's out there and then make a decision. But we need to have some foundation for our decision making. So uh, let's just talk about, uh, I did both tight end versus uh, wide receiver and running back. So in the blue to red, high to low, age, sectors year 02 to 2020 it is clear that in the youth 21 to 26 wide receivers are not as valuable as running backs if you look at the ratio i know 2020 it, it flipped a little bit okay but these last few years it it's it's been, uh, you know, there's some trends there that deserve, and like I said, uh, to be looked at. But I just wonder, are these the ones that can't, are coming in? Do we have a lackluster uh, running backs that were drafted, or was that COVID that caused some issues? I suspect. Right now, I'm going to say that's COVID. So I'm thinking that with all ties out there, you break towards the uh, running backs that are young. The old uh, 27 to 30, it's it's wide receivers all the all the day, okay, all day long. And with 31 plus, we've had some surprising years. Actually, I think that this, I think people would be surprised at these ratios here. I was, I would not have predicted that. You see, that's what reference class forecasting does for you. You kind of have an idea based on probably something that's not telling you anything. A feeling, whatever. So if somebody would have said, hey, you know, stay away from older running backs versus older wide receivers, 
I would have said uh, probably stay away from both, but if I've got to pick, I'll probably pick a wide receiver. And that would have been not the best thing to do in these years, but the thing to do those two years. So we've had some different information here. So it almost looked like it's tied even, like it's hard to, you see, if you look from 13 to, it's four that would, actually anything above one is really strongly running back. So we really only had two years in 2013 that have biased to the running back. So I guess if we look at it that way, then I guess we should go what you would predict. And point seven is really bad. I mean, that's uh, that's just that's that means those running backs are terrible bad in that age range. So let's look at the the trend. And uh, youth is telling us let's go for running backs. I think we're probably going wide receivers ish do note the 31 had that trend but we really dropped down here so i'm thinking running backs so let the age be the tiebreaker if that or that needs to be skewed in other words i would not want to miss a younger running back later in the draft if I can help it and you know I think most people would probably think that so just because I say it doesn't mean I my opinion of it is not oh wow this is novel and new that's no not at all it's just this is what I use to think about my thinking I guess thinking about thinking and the forecasting reference class forecasting that's what i like to i like to consider the actual metrics not just you know feelings uh so tight ends here's in orange over here here's the same group uh anything above one would mean super tight ends but Tight ends, for the most part, are never, remember the gap I've showed you, are never going to be close to the to running backs. Getting close to one, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, is pretty damn good. So I do notice we're getting some 0.8s here with old tight ends versus old uh, wide receivers. I'm not sure I would have thought that. but. And then I think there's some, in this category, uh, might tell us that tight ends might be a viable option later in your draft, especially if they're 27 and up. I'm staying away from the youth, and I think these metrics pretty much are telling us that. So I think I'm, I'm you know, breaking the tie towards the, uh, the uh, you know running backs, I mean, sorry, do the the tight ends. I'm looking extra hard at season tight ends, ignoring young tight ends versus younger uh, wide receivers. I think we can take that home. Feeling pretty good about that. What else? And here's just the trends. Here's the older ones. Notice they're at the top here. And uh, I think the tight ends have more of an advantage being an older tight end than an older wide receiver. I think that's the take home. Here's the next age group. And you can see there's a break with the young. So I think that's the take home right now, just on the aggregate looking across. Okay, I think I've had my fun. This has been longer than I wanted, but this is, you know, hey, it is what it is, and I've got to go through it. So please come back. I've got, 
cut more data than you'll believe. Okay, uh, this is the process. Uh, we're all wore out. You can come back, listen to it again, you know, jump around a little bit, get your reference class forecasting going. Okay, do not wait. Okay, hit my lessons before I come and beat you. Okay, uh, we're having extra fun in the process. Come back. See ya.